in my experience, my limited experience with this microphone, oh, my, uh, my friend almost fell over. Whoa, that was close. I caught it. No damage. It's my microphone. No damage. Um, yeah, that was close. What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on a home studio setup for voiceover. And we've got, oh, a famous microphone in the booth today. This is the Electro Voice RE20 dynamic microphone. And I am psyched to use this microphone. I've never actually used this one before. Never for production. I've just never had my mitts on one. Normally when I'm in uh, other studios, they normally have me on a, on a condenser microphone. They don't often have me on a dynamic. And certainly not this, uh, certainly not this one. But this microphone legendary been around forever and uh by all accounts it's got uh it has earned its reputation so we're going to put this microphone through its paces we're going to compare it to a few other microphones talk about some of the uh the pros and cons of it um see if we like how it sounds and we're going to learn a little bit about the electro voice re20 all right, so let's start. Uh, this is a dynamic microphone, which means that it uh, does not require phantom power, uh, as opposed to the condenser microphones that you often see me testing on this channel. They're generally, uh, most voiceover microphones are, are condenser microphones. Now, that doesn't, you know, dynamic versus condenser, it's, it's all a, a matter of choice and how it sounds for you. There's nothing that says you have to use a dynamic versus having to use a condenser. This particular microphone is really optimized for vocals. So you absolutely can use this for, uh, for voice work, especially uh, audiobook, long-form narration, podcasting, uh, streaming, something like that. Um, the advantage to a dynamic microphone in the voice, voiceover setting is dynamics tend to become less sensitive very quickly as you back off the microphone. So as I step back from the microphone, keeping my voice, my speaking voice the same, we should see a very significant fall off in how loud I am. Now I am a foot, maybe 14 inches off the microphone, not far at all. Uh, but you'll see that I get much louder, much, uh, there's, a bit, there's a great big difference between being 14 inches off the microphone and being an inch off the microphone. Really a huge difference. And that you can use that to your advantage if you have a source of noise nearby that you're having difficulty um, getting out of your recording. So if you're, uh, if you're streaming or, or something like that and you've got a, a loud computer fan, a dynamic can help because it will be less sensitive at a distance. And because you generally want to be so up close to the microphone, the volume difference between your voice and the source of noise uh, can be very significant. Pattern-wise, this is a cardioid bordering on a wide cardioid pattern. So its lobe of sensitivity is, it says it's 180 degrees. So everything in front of the microphone, whether you're on one side or you're on the other, the, the, this one will be very, uh, it, it should pick you up equally if you're on the uh, the front side of the microphone. Now, that's different than, say, uh, 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 a regular. I, I think this is a little bit wider. They say the full 180 degrees it, that you won't have any drop off, whereas my experience with uh, many cardioids is as you start to hit that 90 degree, it will start to fall off. So this is a little tiny bit wider is what it says. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not going to be much. And generally, you're not going to be using this as a side address microphone. Even though, by the look of it, by the look of it, you might think that you could use this as a side, side address. But really, this is a front address microphone. Now, some of the things that um, ElectroVoice uh, sells about this microphone is that it's uh, it really is optimized for voice the frequency response of the microphone really is optimized for voice it is uh, the frequency response is not the full range of human hearing it's really close but it's not the full range of human hearing it's uh, becomes less sensitive below 45 uh, hertz so the sub bass that you might experience 
um, from proximity effect or something like that, which we'll talk about in a second. So that sub, a lot of that sub bass is just not going to show up at all. And the really super high frequencies above 18,000 hertz. This microphone does not, uh, it says it's insensitive above, above 18,000 hertz. So your usable frequency is 45 to 18,000, uh, as opposed to 20 to 20,000, which is typical of, of many condenser and other microphones. This one's a little bit smaller. Based on some of the recordings I've heard, this microphone can be considered warm. It's not bright. Now, we're going to compare this one to this one. It's probably its number one competitor. Uh, let's get this one set up. This is the Shure SM7B. Now, I've got these. It, it's a little bit exaggerated in the, uh, in the camera here, but these are both within this far of my mouth. Uh, I'm going to put this one just a little tiny bit closer so that they are, so that the front of them are, is exactly the same. And I'm going to try and stay right in between them so that we can get a comparison between these two. These are both dynamic microphones. These are most often uh, referenced at the same time. So some people love the Electro Voice sound. Some people love the SM7B sound. It's really a personal preference. These are similar in price point. I think I think this SM7B is probably maybe seventy or eighty dollars less expensive. I think this is in the four fifty range, and I think this is in the three fifty range. I'll, I'll put a, a graphic up or whatever the, the current prices are. This one might be three ninety nine, four fifty. So depends on where, where the prices are right now. But I, to my recollection, the RE twenty is a little bit more expensive than the SM seven B. The Electro Voice, uh, the RE20, one of the, th the big selling up points about the, um, the RE20 is that it does, not, it does not suffer proximity effect at all. So as you get closer to the microphone, the equalization of the microphone doesn't really change. So uh, in the SM7B, so as I get closer to the SM7B, you may notice that my voice gets a bit bassier. But with the RE20, as I get closer to it, my voice really doesn't get bassier. So as I move back and I and I speak at this distance, and as I speak at this distance, as I speak at this distance, and as I speak at this distance, the proximity effect is should be less pronounced on the RE20. And that's using something that they call the, the variable D technology, uh, which is just their way of saying that we've EQ'd out the, the proximity effect. I think it's got something to do with these vents on the side. I don't really know how they do it uh, but they and it, it for me it really does not display any proximity effect at all so as i get closer to it i really don't notice it making much of a difference to my voice which means i can't get up in there and make my voice sound really authoritative whereas i might be able to do that with the sm7b maybe yeah, but you can <laughs> so you can sort of play with that uh, a little bit on, on some mics that have proximity effect in it now, the SM7B has some switches so that you can roll the bass off. You can enhance the presence of it. The, uh, the Electro Voice does have a single switch on it, which is a high-pass filter, or what you might also call a, ba a bass roll-off, so that the, uh, the bass becomes less pronounced. So, uh, naturally, this doesn't have that proximity effect, which is a lot of times what that switch is on the microphone for, is to eliminate that proximity effect. But this one it doesn't have it, but they also have that bass roll-off. And it's a little bit different than many of the other microphones that we've, that we've talked about. In this one, the bass roll-off switch starts practically up in the mid-range at like 400 hertz and has a very gentle bass roll-off. I'm going to switch it right now. So let's switch the uh, bass the, uh, the high pass filter is now engaged. And for me, when I listen to my headphones, it's a subtle change if, if you notice it at all. So as we get closer to it, maybe there's a little bit less in, uh, bass in my voice. Perhaps that's flattering to some voices. Maybe that's exactly what you want so that you can uh, reduce plosives, um, that you can um, maybe accentuate uh, uh, someone's voice. You switch it back and forth and you see if you, which way you think it sounds better with it engaged or with it disengaged. I'm going to disengage it so that we have it nice and flat. Okay. Uh, for proximity effect. Did I lose my just train of thought? I just lost my train of thought. Oh, I hate when that happens. Price, pattern, both cardioids, uh, proximity effect, 
Mm, yeah. Those are the biggies. Uh, so, the question is, which of these do you like the way it sounds better? These will often be used uh, in comparisons. The one thing I do find about <laughs> the Electro Voice is, for whatever reason, it's shock mount. Aftermarket, uh, uh, it doesn't, I don't think it comes with the microphone. I think there's a separate purchase, but you often see it with this enormous shock mount. It is an enormous shock mount. Look at that thing. Compared to the SM7B. I've almost never seen a 7B in a shock mount. Okay, so these are these uh, the, these are the two microphones that you most commonly see paired up against each other. Why don't we switch now? Oh, and so the last thing I'll talk about is the gain that's required. Whew, it's hot in the booth today. Be glad when summer's over. I have these plugged into a uh, Personas amplifier, a preamplifier, uh, which offers, I think, almost 60 dB of gain. Now, these preamps are practically all the way up there. It's right down below me. Yeah, these are at like 98%. I don't turn them all the way up because I don't want to introduce any hiss. But these microphones, these are as loud as these microphones can be under normal circumstances. So what you would typically do or what you see uh, suggested a lot is you add you add into the mix something called a cloud lifter. And this is basically a pre-preamplifier. You take the signal from the microphone into the cloud lifter, and its sole job is to increase gain. And then you send that increased gain over to the preamplifier that's in your interface. And that's to make the uh, that interface's job a little bit easier. So I'm going to switch and I'm going to put a cloud lifter in front of both of these microphones. And we're going to see if it makes any difference. Okay, so now I have the cloud lifter in place on both microphones. So what the cloud lifter does is it provides about 25 additional dB of gain, which means you can turn your preamp gain down and still get a significantly louder signal. The cloud lifter itself works off phantom power, so I've turned phantom power on on my on my interface. So phantom power is being fed to both of the cloud lifters, but the phantom power stops at the cloud lifter. It's just using it to power it. it doesn't make it over to the microphone. But what this does is this allows us to one use a preamp. It gives us the opportunity to use preamps that maybe don't have enough gain for a dynamic microphone. Uh, and also it allows us to use a lower setting on the preamp. So if there is any preamp noise, it usually happens when the preamps are cranked way, way up. So when the, if the preamp is all the way up, uh, you tend to get, uh, you tend to get additional hiss, additional background noise. It usually manifests itself way when you're really sort of giving it the beans there. So by able, by turning the preamp down, the cloud lifter, so far as I'm able to tell, doesn't introduce any additional noise. Really doesn't color the sound at all, to my knowledge. I've never noticed it to color the sound. Uh, but it does allow us to get a lot more gain out of it. It turns your uh, 50 or 60 dB uh, interface into like a 75 uh, dB interface, which is plenty of gain for just about anything. So now we've got the, the two side by side, and this is how they sound with the cloud lifter. Any different? I don't think it sounds any different. Uh, it shouldn't really change the the tonal quality of the microphone. It just makes them hotter, makes it easier to use, makes it so that you can use uh, a, a different, uh, a lower power preamp. So if you're starting with something like a uh, a Scarlet Two I Two or a Personas um, audio box or something, or maybe a Zoom H Five that might not have enough mm, gumption, um, you can uh, you can add a cloud lifter to it. Cloud lifter is about a hundred and fifty. Dollars, hundred and twenty dollars. So it can add. I mean, it's about the price of its interface. A little overpriced in my book, uh, but that's that's uh, this is a, an example of how the RE20 and the Shure SM7B sound with a cloud lifter. Now, what I'd like to do is I'm going to keep the RE20 and let's try some other microphones just as a point of comparison. So you can sort of we'll do a little bit of a shootout between these two microphones. So I'll get the next one in place. Okay, so now we have the RE uh, the the RE twenty up against uh, one of my favorite mics, the the old mainstay here, the CAD E one hundred S. Also, these two are in the same price point. These two have different polar patterns. Uh, this is a like I said before, the sort of the wide cardioid. This is a hyper uh, super cardioid microphone, so it's got a little bit narrower sensitivity range to it. 
Now, this one right now, the E100S, I do not have the uh, the base roll off the high pass filter in place, uh, but I'll switch that on. And I think that will give us a better apples to apples comparison. But first, we'll just talk for a second to just get a sense of how the E100S compares to the RE20. The E100S can, uh, you can get a little bit of uh, proximity effect out of it. You can, as you get closer to it, try not to pop the microphone. You can get some additional bass out of this microphone. Whereas the RE20, you don't get so much bass out of it. And that's, as we mentioned before, because of the variable D, variable D technology that they have built into it. Now, on the, uh, the E100, there is a, uh, a high-pass filter, bass roll-off. So I'll engage that so you can see. Now, as I move in closer to it, there is less of that proximity effect uh, on this microphone to sort of mimic and simulate the same sort of technology that's built into this microphone automatically. So you can get a sense of how they sound. Now, I don't imagine that these two sound the same. It's hard to tell in my headphones because I hear them both at the same time. But I'm, I'm going to say that this is probably um, a lot more detailed. Pro I'm guessing has more clarity to it than this microphone, but you'll you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, again, now let's see. The uh, we'll do a, a, a proximity test in the other direction now. So now I'll uh, now you've heard me talking into both. But now if I stand a foot a foot off, let's see. So I'm about I'm about ooh, I'm about. 12 inches, 14 inches off the microphone. Uh, and I'm trying to make it so that they're both pointed directly at me. Uh, we should see now, does the E100S and the RE20, are they the same volume? Uh, typically, the you know, the wrap on, on dynamics is the farther away you are, the quieter they get. They fall off more rapidly than this, uh, than the condensers. So we'll see if that's actually the case here. Judging by my waveforms, I put the waveforms down, it looks like they're going to be pretty similar as far as how I sound from a distance. But is there a difference in clarity? Anything like that? Uh, you be the judge. Now we'll get back up close to it. So that is the CAD E100S against the RE20. Um, and maybe I'll put one more. Now I'll compare it. And same same price-ish point as this. This is uh, really comparable to the, the SM7B. So we're in the same ballpark price-wise. This is probably a little bit cheaper than the uh, RE20, but you know, in, in the same ballpark. Um, how about I compare this one to my uh, Neumann TLM-103? Oh, and I do have the cloud lifter still in place for the RE20. Is that what I should do? I don't know. That's why I'm going to leave it like that to put it on par with, with the rest of these. Okay, now we're comparing between the RE20 and the Neumann TLM-103. Now, these are two totally really different microphones, other than they're both cardioid pattern microphones. This one is about uh, $1,000, $1,100, uh, depending on the, the market. And so this is about half the price. Condenser, dynamic, really different. But just as a point of comparison, just so you get the, the range of different different options that are out there, uh, this, is, this is the... RE20 versus the TLM-103. Now, my guess is that these don't sound really all that similar at all. This is a, typically a very uh, very bassy mic. A lot of a lot of really great low end comes out of the, the Neumanns, whereas the, uh, the, the RE20, a lot of that is probably missing. There's probably a, a pretty significant difference in the, in the bass response uh, for each of these microphones, especially as you start to get up close to them. Try not to pop that Neumann. But as you get up close to this microphone, it can sound very, uh, very muscular is the, the word I like to use for it. It's a, re it's a really uh, uh, authoritative sound you can get out of this microphone, whereas it's uh, less in the RE20. Now, as far as warmth or clarity, does it sound better? Does it sound worse? Does it sound the same? Uh, it's really up for you to decide uh, which one you think sounds better for well, you can see how it sounds for my voice and then maybe maybe extrapolate how it might sound for yours. There's one other microphone that I'd like to test this with that I don't have with me, but I did a previous review. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and uh, dig out my uh, my review of the um, Electro Voice RE27ND, which is this one's 
big sibling, much more expensive, a more expensive microphone, same sort of form factor. It's also dynamic, but it has a different magnet, a little bit different design. And I think based on the way I listened to that, uh, that RE27 before, it's a brighter mic, whereas this is a warmer mic. It's not as, uh, not as crisp in the, in the high end. Uh, but why don't I, uh, maybe put a bit of that video in just so you can hear it, just so you now that you've got a little ear memory on this one, you'll be able to hear that. We are here to talk about this microphone that was lent to me by a fellow booth junkie. Thank you for lending me this microphone. I am so psyched to use it. I've been wanting to use this family of microphones for a long time, and I've never really had the opportunity to get my mitts on one. So we have, this is a, broad a broadcast classic. This is the Electro Voice RE 27 ND microphone. This is a EV stands for Electro Voice. That's the manufacturer. RE27 is the brand. Uh, and this is the big brother, the step up from uh, another broadcast classic, which is the RE20, which I'm sure many of you that are familiar with microphones have heard about if you actually haven't heard. This is the um, the the big brother to a big sister, the older sibling, the um, yeah, the other one in the family. Okay, so there you have it. That is my comprehensive sound overview of the Electro Voice RE20 dynamic microphone. What do you think? Do you like it? I, it? This is a legendary microphone. You'll see it all over the place. It's a, it's a hard to go wrong with. It's a question on whether or not you like it for your voice, whether or not it's right for your situation, whether or not you can deal with the size <laughs> and weight of this microphone. It is, a, it is a heavyweight but super durable mic. You buy this mic, the only reason it should, it should ever leave your possession is if you decide to sell it. You'll, this thing will last you forever. What do you think? Do you like it? Maybe you do. I hope so. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, and if you do, just hit that like button or, or give me you know, some sort of feedback on uh, YouTube. I, I certainly appreciate it. Other than that, the best I can tell you is go pick up a microphone. Maybe a dynamic microphone. Maybe a one that's uh, a dynamic that's ready for broadcast. Get out there. Find a script and record something amazing. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks.